Hey guys, it's Monica. Thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me. I'm actually doing a tag video. This tag video was done by Susan, a little poet, and I thought it was a really good thought-provoking tag, especially since I've recently gone to my 50th high school reunion. So this tag is actually called the Grown Ass woman tag. I hope I don't get censored from YouTube for using that. But anyways, that's the name of the tag. And if you are curious as to what this tag is all about, of course, you know the drill. Stay tuned. Okay, so I was watching Susan's video and I'll link it below and she had done this tag and you know if you if you follow Susan's channel You know that she is just a wonderful wonderful creative storyteller She can weave a story around any topic that will mesmerize you and uh, She has visuals and she has music and just the way she talks and expresses herself. I think she, she does a phenomenal job. So I had to do this tag. And one of the tag questions actually is, is um, who, you know, what woman has influenced you? Well, I would have to say Susan certainly has influenced me to do this tag. So I hope you enjoy it. And I am going to have to be looking down at my notes so that I get the tag questions correct. So I hope you can um, bear with me. Anyways, the first one is, what would you tell your 20 year old self? So um, interestingly enough, I really, you know, I've done that, I've answered that question. I did a video about my 50th high school reunion or 50 years since high school, you know, what have I learned? I did a video and I'll link that below as well um, about my, you know, 50 years out of high school. And I would, the same thing, you know, I, I can't change my answer to that, even though that wasn't specifically, the question, um, but what would I tell my 20 year old self? And for sure, 100% it is plan for the future. That's something I didn't do. I think I mentioned that video that I lived in the moment, often paycheck to paycheck. I think a lot of us do that when we're young, especially when we're young and we're married and we have children and stuff like that. So I didn't really plan for the future. I didn't really, when I was young, start thinking about being old. And so if I could go back, if I could knock on the door of my 20 year old self or my 18 year old self, I would, number one, start talking about sunblock. I've mentioned this often in my videos. It, it, I think most of you understand the importance of protecting your skin, especially my channels, you know, about anti-aging to a certain degree or aging gracefully. Well, none of that's gonna happen if you don't protect your skin. And I so wish I could go back in time and just say, hey, stop wearing sunblock instead of the band of soleil and the iodine and the baking in the sun. I mean, I remember lying on reflective blankets, right, to get the sun to, to draw into me more. So um, you pay the price for that as you as you age. So I never thought of any of that. I never thought of skincare. I never thought of getting old. I never thought of wrinkles. And I certainly never thought to put pennies aside for the rainy day or for someday when I would be old and maybe, gosh, I might want to retire or something of that nature. I never gave any of that thought. Didn't really learn anything about that. Um, I would also go back in time and I would say, you know, don't be so sensitive, Monica. You know, get a little tougher skin because I have always been a person that's been super easy to be hurt, very sensitive, and probably lacking confidence because of that. And um, I think I would just educate myself a little bit that when people are mean, you know, when people people are mean to you, it's usually because they lack in themselves confidence. So sometimes people that are, you know, hurting themselves lash out. I never understood that mentality of lashing out on others just because you're hurting. But I know that that exists. So I, I think I would say, 
kind of, you know, really reverse your thought process when someone hurts you and pity them because they're really hurting. They're hurting so bad that they have to reflect that pain onto someone else as much as they possibly can. And just to not, just to not let it affect you, Monica, as it did. And it did over the course of time. Man, I, w I mean, I wish I could change a lot of things in history, bullying, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, when people are mean and ugly to you, it's because that's the way they're feeling and they're hurting. So they want someone else to hurt as well, if that makes sense. The second question I have is, what was your favorite band from the 70s and the 80s? And I, you know, I was, I graduated high school in 1972. I just had my 50th reunion. I'm going to superimpose some pictures as I talk. I just had my 50th reunion. And, you know, Jay said to me, are you, are you nervous about going? And I said, gosh, you know, I really wasn't because number one, it was a very casual event and I really liked that idea. And number two, there was only maybe three people that I've seen and kept in touch with. The rest of the folks from high school, they're classmates, but I never really hung around 100% with them. And certainly as an adult, I never continued to do that. So uh, my oldest friend that I had, had since I was 12, Barbara, she came to our house and Jay, Jay went with us and he drove us to the reunion. And so I've got a couple of pictures of Barbara and I at the, at the reunion. And, and um, we, it was so funny. People were saying when they saw me and they didn't see Barbara, they go, oh, where's your sidekick? They, they always kind of remembered us together. I never kind of thought she was my sidekick, but some people did. But they always kind of remembered us together. And, it, and it's true because from, you know, 12 years old, to sophomore year when she uh, dropped out basically of school, we were always together. We had the same hairdos. Uh, we held our bodies the same way. We posed the same way. We smiled the same way. And whenever she walked in and I saw her, I cracked up because she put her hair up and I put my hair up and we didn't know, right? And it was so funny how, um, how similar we still are all these years later. Now I have seen her on an occasion, but I probably haven't seen her in, in, in person in a good maybe 10, 15 years now that I'm thinking, but talk to her on Facebook and stuff like that. So anyways, the reunion was a blast. We had close to, I think, 100 people at various points in times show up that night. And it was really awesome because it was casual. It was relaxed. The food was good. We got to mingle. It would crack jokes. And they had a, a slideshow showing with the photos and then some of the old album photo, um, high school albums out or yearbooks out, I should say. So it was really, really awesome. And, you know, we were sitting there thinking and talking and talking about our styles, the jeans we used to wear, the ripped jeans, the wide bell-bottom jeans and stuff like that. And then we were talking about our music, how our music was the greatest. So <laughs> this question, uh, what is the favorite band from the 70s and 80s? And I'm like, oh, I'm reading this, it's totally cracked up. So I think when I think back on those days, my hands on number one band would have been The Doors. I was, a, I was in love with Jim Morrison. I thought he was... He was the hottest, cutest, sexiest looking rock star ever. And I was absolutely in love with Jim Morrison. The, he was moody. He, he was a deep soul. And I just, I loved his music. I loved everything. So hands down, number one would have been The Doors. I think number two of the 70s would have to have been The Eagles. I absolutely love The Eagles. And then Fleetwood Mac. Oh my gosh, Fleetwood Mac. I, I just love that band. And I, I really, I really got into that. And I've watched a few of their revival shows and stuff like that. And I just thought they were really awesome. So definitely The Doors, The Eagles, and Fleetwood Mac. A lot more, but those would be, say, my top three. Number three, what is the one person that influenced you, influenced you the most in your life and why? So influence is funny because it comes and goes. If you had asked me this a couple of years ago, I might have said someone completely different, you know, and it really all depends on your mode and, and where you are in your life. So um, I probably for my, it would have to be my parents. And if I had to pick one over the other at this moment in my life, I feel that I am most like 
my father because he's the one that has most influenced me. My work ethic, um, my personality, the way I look at things. Yes, my father was extremely opinionated, but he had a great way of listening to people and coming across and really thinking about things. And when I was growing up, he was extremely strict. And I said, oh my God, I'd never be that way. But my dad, he's definitely influenced me in so many, many ways. And at 68 years old, I think of my dad often. He lived to be 90 and um, he, he worked hard. He retired late. I'm still working. He retired late and he had dreams, you know, and his dreams... He made them come true from picking up his young family from Europe. You know, I was born in Germany, my brother. He packed us up to unknown territory, right? We were immigrants, um, you know, legal immigrants into the United States. And it was, it was a hard thing because my brother was young and I was young, right? So can you imagine picking up your family when you've got like, you know, someone that's four and someone that's six and a wife and you're going to the strange country and you don't know how to speak the language. So I guess when I hear a lot of the immigrant stories and people trying to come into this country, I, I can resonate with them because I know, um, you know, I know how bad it was on my parents. So. But yeah, so my dad definitely is the person that would I would say at this point in time has influenced me the most overall in the pattern of my life. So my dad, what makes you angry? And what makes me really angry? There's lots of different things that can make me angry, but I choose to let go of my anger. I don't want to hang on to anger. Uh, I want to learn from it. I want to learn from the things that make me angry and, and do better and not be that same way. So if I think overall what makes me the angriest about people is judgmental people. And, and I know there are, there are m many people, even in my real life, that, um, that I know I can peg into this corner. They're very, very judgmental. They feel that their way, their opinion is 100% correct. And I have a close friend, um, her, her and her husband, they, they live, I, they live down south and we were probably on the opposite ends politically and they are very, very opinionated and, um, you know, oftentimes, and I love them daily, so even if people are opinionated, I'm still going to love you, but oftentimes it makes me angry when people are so opinionated that they can't see or even begin to empathize with another side of the story or even believe there could be another truth. So I think because I'm also a certified mediator, I learned to look at both sides over the course of my certification, and being a mediator, means that you do have to walk in the middle, right? You do have to see both sides because you're usually trying to help people come to a resolution. And to do that, you have to understand both sides, where they're coming from. So judgmental people, people that refuse to even entertain the thought that they could be wrong. Um, and they, their, their opinion is the only way, right? It's their way or the highway. They don't comprehend that they have this, gosh, there's a 50% chance that they could actually be wrong in whatever opinion they're spouting. So judgmental people, I think, really make me the angriest. What truly makes you happy? This is super easy. I smile inside every time I see that my kids are happy. So when my kids are happy, and it doesn't have to be material things, it can just be little things they're doing, an apple orchard, flying a kite, riding a bike, the littlest things that they do that makes them happy, makes me happy. So when I'm seeing that my kids are happy and in a good place in life, I smile, both inside and outside. So, have you had face lift, Botox fillers, and what is your honest opinion of it? That's question number six. So I have not had anything done. However, I do want to have some Botox done to my 11s. And um, I sleep with frownies every night. My 11s bother me probably the most. I would love to have a lift. I would benefit from that, but a partial lift or whatever. But that's not in the cards to me. I choose to not spend my money on that. There's too many other things I want to see, do, experience than to have a lift. But a Botox, I would like to have that done. And I think that could be um, 
that could really make me happy. Now, I am also aware of the fact that we sometimes see ourselves in a clouded mirror. And, you know, what I see, you might not see. Like, I see my scar. My husband doesn't see my scar. So, you know, because I had my most surgery, right? So I may be looking at myself in a clouded mirror. And I think we all do that. So I'm, I, I really think we have to, before you make any decisions, you have to really brush that mirror off, clean it off, and look at yourself truly, honestly, weigh the pluses and minus. You know, will a facelift, will this, will it make you feel good? You know, and if you can afford it, if you can save your money, go for it. I have no problem with that. No problem at all. For myself, it's just, I'd like to have my 11s taken care of right now. So at 68, my skin is sagging. I have a ton of wrinkles, um, but that's okay. I've lived and I try to take really good Get good care of myself, good care, good take good care of my skin. I try really hard. So number seven, fill in the blank. I wish I was more. Thought about this. I wish I was more confident. I have gained confidence as I've gotten older, but I have struggled with insecurity and lack of confidence. That feeling of just not being good enough, of not measuring up. I struggle with that almost all my life, to be honest with you. So um, I wish that a, if I could, you know, if I could change it, I wish that I could zap my fingers and make myself into a confident person because I know the more confident I feel, the better I look actually. <laughs> so yeah, confidence. I wish I was more confident. Um, you're all time, can't live without beauty product. I think I, I don't think I could face the world without mascara, really. Even if I'm not doing anything around the house, I have to put some mascara on. If I'm just beating around the house, I have to put my mascara on. So mascara, number one. Uh, number two, a moisturizer, I have very dry skin. So a good moisturizer. And I'm going through some of my products and you know what I've been using because I want to formulate my thoughts on what, what do I really use every single day. You know, I've got a lot of stuff, right? So um, moisturizer, and then on top of that, you know, sunblock. Yeah, those are those are the three things. I know it was one, but I, I just can't narrow it down because I need to have a moisturizer. I need my mascara. Any mascara, I would take any mascara because I have my favorites. And um, I need moisturizer and I need sunblock. So what are the three words you live by? Hmm. So my three words that I live by, I have always believed, number one, smile. No matter what, smile. I walked around my reunion and I smiled the entire night. You know, people would say, hi, I'd smile. I just smiled the entire night. And I think when you smile, people feel more comfortable with you. It resonates and it just sets that stage for feeling good when you're smiling. The second one is just be accepting of people. Accept what you have in life. Don't always wish for something better or different. Accept where you are. Make it the best possible day that you can have. And, um, and, and just no matter what, the third part of that is to love. Love yourself first. Because if you don't love yourself, it'll be really hard for you to love anyone else. So love yourself first. And then once you have that self-love, the rest of that love is just going to flow into you and resonate. So my video is not like Susan's. She's awesome. I'm going to definitely link her video. But yeah, this is the things that I've learned being a grown-ass woman 50 years out of high school. Yeah. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Please leave me a comment below. I would truly appreciate it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.